Hi everyone, my name is Darren Pilcher. I'm a research scientist with the University of Washington at Seacoast, and today I'm going to be talking to you about modeling ocean acidification in the Bering Sea to support long-term planning and management of the largest U.S. fishery. So the global oceans currently absorb about 25% of annual human-generated CO2 emissions, thus providing a climate mitigation service to us by reducing the effects of climate change. However, this service comes at a cost, and that cost is ocean acidification. So as the oceans absorb CO2 from the atmosphere, this carbon dissolves in seawater and through a cascade of chemical changes, lowers the pH in carbonate mineral saturation states. We're concerned about OA because we think this process can have negative impacts on our living marine resources. So for example, biological sensitivity experiments have found direct effects of reduced growth rates for juvenile fish and shellfish. Indirectly, OA can also reduce the abundance of prey for these commercially important populations. Over time, the effects of these stressors may reduce the productivity of commercial and, fish and subsistence fish stocks, which can ultimately damage Alaskan fishing and food security. A previous OA risk assessment, which I'm showing here in the figure on the left, found that many Alaskan com coastal communities are more reliant on these fisheries for commercial and subsistence use, and because of this, are more vulnerable to the effects of OA, shown as the red and yellow colors in that figure. Furthermore, previous bioeconomic work highlighted a potential decline in red king crab harvests in Bristol Bay under some unmanaged OA scenarios. The idea is that the unmanaged OA scenario follows that black line in the figure on the right, and that because of the slope of this response, we won't be able to detect any effects until a fishery collapse is underway. So if we want to avoid that crash in yield due to OA, what do we need? Essentially, how do we bring OA into fisheries management? So to do this, we're going to develop products for both longer-term strategic planning and shorter-term tactical advice. For the long-term strategic planning, we need to know where the system is heading. To do this, we need accurate projections to support biological experiments, socioeconomic models, and regional vulnerability assessments. The main avenue for the tactical advice is to develop an indicator, which is presented through the NOAA Fisheries Ecosystem Status Report. This report is a compilation of all the available scientific knowledge of the state of the ecosystem for that year which then gets presented to the Fisheries Management Council as part of the catch limit setting process. For the Bering Sea, fulfilling these requirements with observations is really challenging because the available OA data is limited and it's a very difficult place to sample. So for example, sea ice extent, shown here is a, uh, it's an important ecosystem indicator. However, we don't have a similar long-term time series for OA. Therefore, for OA, it's going to require the use of a model, and I'm going to use a regional model since it provides the necessary resolution while also incorporating coastal processes that may not be captured in a global model. So we've developed and used a regional ocean model to generate long-term strategic projections of changing water chemistry for the Bering Sea. Here I'm showing the conditions at the surface, which is the figure on the left, and at the bottom, which is the figure on the right, under a high emissions business as usual climate scenario, or RCP 8.5, shown in those orange lines, and a more middle of the road emission scenario, which is RCP 4.5, shown in the blue. This is tracking the projected change in solubility of a mineral called aragonite, which many calcifying marine organisms, such as pteropods, use to build their shells. The lighted shader lines show each of the three individual model simulations for each scenario, and the bolded line shows the average of them. In both figures, we see the long-term decrease in this variable omega over the 21st century reflecting ocean acidification, with less of an overall decrease in RCP 4.5. Furthermore, the projected decrease is greater at the surface than at the bottom, though I will note that current bottom water values are actually lower overall, which I'll show in a couple slides. This means that bottom waters are projected to pass key thresholds, such as the omega equals 1 uh, threshold, faster than at the surface. 
We can also use these model projections combined with biological sensitivity experiments in order to narrow in on a specific region and stock. Here I'm projecting habitat suitability for red king crab in Bristol Bay using chemical thresholds determined by experiments from Chris Long and others at the NOAA Kodiak Lab. These figures are showing when the water conditions are above the respective threshold. So this is illustrating the decline in these favorable water conditions over the 21st century. I want to note that that green line representing a pH value of 7.5 was associated with 100% of crab mortality in these experimental settings. So these are pretty extreme conditions for red king crab. These conditions emerge under the high emission scenario but are absent in the middle of the road emission scenario. This is part of why I really like these figures because it provides a tangible example of how emissions reductions can benefit marine ecosystems. We're also incorporating this output into the Alaska Climate Integrated Modeling Project, which is a large multidisciplinary effort spanning the physics to the fisheries. Results from the first iteration of ACLIM are coming out now, and we're also expanding the use of this OA model output and the ongoing ACLIM 2.0 project. What I and so what I presented so far has all been related to long-term strategic planning, but what about tactical planning on shorter time frames? So we can also use this model to simulate past and present conditions. Here I'm showing bottom water omega for just the Bering Sea management area. On the left is the average July to September conditions over the full model simulation. And on the right is the 2021 anomaly compared to that average. So for 2021, the two noteworthy items are the bottom waters near St. Lawrence Island were greater than normal, while other outer shelf waters were lower and more corrosive than normal. In fact, this outer shelf coercivity is part of the multi-year pattern that first emerged in 2018, which we think is likely caused by an intrusion, intrusion of off-shelf water from the Bering Sea Basin onto the outer shelf. This water is very old and has a very high carbon concentration, so it's generating this local signal of really low omega values. We also use this information to develop index values for the entire shelf based on biologically relevant thresholds. So here I'm showing the percent of bottom waters for the entire shelf where omega is less than one in the gray line and a pH of less than 7.8 in the black line. That pH value is based on those same red king crab experiments I showed earlier, which found negative effects to condition and survival starting at pH values of 7.8 or less. So how to read this plot is as the, this value goes up, conditions are generally more corrosive and acidic and then are better when it decreases. So overall, both indices have slightly improved since 2020 and are near the 2003 to 2020 average. Furthermore, both indices also peaked back in 2013 and have gradually improved overall since. This is illustrating that ocean acidification is a gradual long-term process and that there will be a lot of year-to-year -year natural variability in these variables. This index time series along with the two spatial plots from the previous slide first appeared as a noteworthy section in the 2020 ecosystem status report and was transitioned to an indicator for the 2021 report. We plan to annually update this indicator and continue to develop it based on feedback from our stakeholder community. So to recap, how are we bringing OA into fisheries management? For strategic planning, we provided long-term projections to the ACLIM framework, Northern Rock Soul Stock Assessment, and Pacific Cod Sensitivity Studies. For tactical planning, we contributed to the 2020 and 2021 Ecosystem Status Report, including the first iterations of our indicator. We're also developing a much longer model hindcast in order to expand the historical perspective of our index. We're further testing our ability to produce four-month seasonal forecasts that could provide advance notice for the development of more corrosive water conditions. We're really excited about this work and are continually looking forward for ways to improve our products. And with that, I'd like to thank our funding sources, the fantastic team that I work with, uh, and everyone listening in online.